I'm Chris Sanchez and welcome to Sonoma Views, where we talk real estate, property management, and local restaurant reviews. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about how to handle a security deposit refund when you have multiple tenants living in a home or a rental property. Also, when you have roommates living in a rental property. Thank you very much for being here. So let's get started. Um, all right, what a tricky situation. And <laughs> I'm going to have to take you to the beginning just to to illustrate the scenario because it's it's tricky. I've been through it so many times through the years that I've just developed a really good process in order to handle this before it even becomes an issue because it always will. All right, from the beginning, you have landlord has a rental property on the market and for the sake of the, the scenario, three people uh, individual, single, unrelated people want to rent a property together as roommates. Okay? They submit the rental application, they go through the process, uh, first month's rent and full security deposit paid in advance. Uh, you, the, the landlord presents the rental agreement, they sign, landlord collects the security deposit check. For this assumption, $3,000 security deposit. You have three individual people who are moving in together. You might be doing the math in your head. Logically, maybe $1,000 a piece. But here's the key point. That's up to the applicants, the new tenants, to figure it out. It's not the landlord's job to decide how they come up with that money, where they come up with that money, whether it you know be their own or borrowed or from parents or whatnot. Um, and it really doesn't matter. So as landlord, property manager, when we have an available rental and we're executing a lease agreement moving forward, the requirement is simple, $3,000 security deposit, one check, cashier's check, certified good funds, okay? I don't care if one person pays $100 and the second person pays $2,900 and the third person pays nothing. I don't care if they each contributed $1,000 in order to bring me that one cashier's check, okay? I have to repeat this for sake of simplicity. One rental unit, say it's a one home, a single family home, three bedrooms. So it's one home, one rental unit, one lease agreement that is mutually signed by all three people. So they're all three equally responsible for the performance of that lease one security deposit, one rent payment. This is not room rentals. It is not um, for fake fictitious names, Bob, Mary, and Joe. It's not one rental agreement per person, a thousand dollars deposit per person. One house, one lease, one security deposit. Okay. So my key point here is that they will figure it out and everyone's happy to get their new place start the move and get the keys to their place and move in, start settling in. It's not a problem. After that, they pay the rent as scheduled and everything is fine until it's not. Something happens, uh, eventually they're going to move away, they're gonna end, uh, they're gonna move out, they're gonna end that tenancy at some point, okay? Whether Joe moves out and Mary and Bob or they want to stick around and cover the rent all by themselves. So it was three people and now it's only two and they go on. But if Joe left, what happened to his security deposit? Stayed with the property. Okay. Does he make a big deal out of it when he moves out? I don't know. They have to figure it out. It stays with the property. We don't do fractions of security deposit. We don't do a partial refund because it was not a partial deposit coming in, it was one full. All right, I hope you're following here. <laughs> uh, um, so that's one scenario. One tenant moves out, two stay behind. Uh, in a perfect world, all three people would move out together. So I'm gonna use this as the example, okay? Because all sorts of messy stuff could happen in between, okay? Like when a tenant moves out <laughs> and two remain. All right, um, that's another video. So. In a perfect world, let's say maybe they're into their second year and the lease is coming to an end. Let's say it's ending April 30th. 
okay, we got a 30 day notice. The, ten the tenants are voluntarily moving out and that's another key point. The tenants decided they're eventually moving out, gives, gives the landlord 30 day notice and then you start preparing. I'm gonna have a vacancy. Um, give them their required paperwork that they need, do a pre-move out inspection if they need, uh, which is a legal requirement, by the way, I don't wanna uh, skip over that. Uh, landlords have to give tenants a the notice that they're entitled to a pre move out inspection before they move out it's the right to initial inspection so if uh, you're a landlord and you're not doing that please look up the um, Sonoma County anyway California law I'll look it up right to initial inspection for tenants moving out once again in a perfect example perfect scenario all three people are still living there it's been a good tendency they're just moving out voluntarily good do the move out get the keys they're completely moved out you get the keys back you have 21 days to issue that security deposit refund if there are any deductions that are going to be taken from their security deposit if you're going to charge them for anything you also have to provide a closing statement itemized closing statement which is the disposition of their security deposit and the key again it's the tenants security deposit it does not belong to the landlord so that money has to be re, uh, refunded back to the tenants uh, that security deposit could be used as you know for necessary cleaning damages balance owed etc you have to provide invoices and receipts or invoices and a closing statement back to the tenant if you're not refunding the, the full refund so that's security deposit refund 101. Now, how do you deal with <laughs> how do you deal with the tenants when they want their share? Okay, how? So that's the point of this video. Um, I do one of two things. One, my lease agreement that I use it states from the day that they signed, taking you back to the beginning again, when they signed that agreement when they moved in, nobody pays attention to it because they're thinking I have to come up with money and I have to move want to secure the lease but it does state in there the security deposit will be refunded to all the people all the original tenants on that lease so that means when simple numbers uh, I'm gonna return the security deposit and let's say they left the place perfectly clean immaculate no damages full refund three thousand dollars well I would issue a check full refund three thousand dollars to Bob and Mary and Joe one check written out to all three tenants because it was one lease agreement for that one rental unit it is not my problem it shouldn't be your problem as a landlord how they uh, cash that check how they split it up okay your requirement is to release the refund as it should be now, the, the problem with that, it's not necessarily it's, it's landlord's fault, but it can be a problem because it creates a customer service issue down the road. Uh, sometimes one person will leave the area. So in a great example, all three of them could walk into their Bank of America or Wells Fargo in person. They could go cash it because they're all there. They could all sign in and endorse a check. Some banks are more lenient, some are more uh, sticklers on it. But if a check is written out, made payable to all those people, those are the banking rules, they're not our rules, how they're able to deposit or cash it, okay? Sometimes people move out of the area. Um, I've seen, I've had tenants who go to the Coast Guard, they're gonna be on a ship, they're moving away, they're going back home, they're going out of the country, and it's just not possible for them to all get together or sign the same check or be able to cash it so it creates a a logistic uh the logistic a logistical uh, problem with the tenants being able to cash it so therefore it creates ongoing customer service dealing with the tenants after they've already moved out meanwhile you're preparing that rental on the market showing it looking for new tenants and getting them ready to move in so it's just one extra thing to do after the fact so the first thing i do is refund it to all the people listed on the lease Simple as that, let them figure it out. The second option, which I just ended up incorporating into my procedures over the years because year over year was having the same old thing. I just created a system uh, to get around it. Uh, to make it simpler, by the way. 
uh, created a form which I use, I'm happy to share as well. It's a joint instructions for security deposit refund. Now, what you have to remember is that the security deposit money does not belong to you. It belongs to the tenants. So you can't just hand it over to Bob because he asked for it. You can't or you shouldn't just give it over to Mary because she's been your main contact and you don't deal with Bob and Joe. If you, Here's the problem. If you say, here's $3,000, hand it over to Mary. She takes it. She deposits it. She's gone. Now you have a liability to Bob and Joe. Where's my money? Well, we gave it to Mary. Well, why? Well, because she asked for it. But we didn't ask for it. Authorize it. We're on the lease too. And then it gets even hairier when Bob put up all the security deposit. He had an agreement with them. He was going to put up the security deposit to secure the rental. And he would get it all back when they moved out. If they had any deductions, then the others too, okay? You can see where this gets tricky. Um, I call it tenant drama, but it's something that happens. I've had boyfriend-girlfriend separation or husband and wife. They take off. One person asking for their deposit over here. Meanwhile, the other tenant's asking for their deposit over here. It's only one deposit. <laughs> I can't issue a full refund to both uh, in separate checks. So because of that, my responsibility as a property manager, I'm speaking for myself now as a property manager, I have to release that security deposit. So by signing this form, it's a mutual agreement among all the people listed on that lease. And it could even get trickier when you have co-signers on there. Okay, that's another topic, another video. I would need all three people to sign the same document that say whatever they agreed to, make it only to Bob's name or make it only to Mary's name. All three people agree to it and then they give me that document that's signed and dated and that becomes the, the, the mutual legal instructions. Property manager, Chris, release the, our money. We would like it to be issued over to Mary. Then what Mary could do is she could go to the bank, she could deposit it or she could cash it and then figure it out between the roommates. They're in it together. They have to figure it out. Just like they had to figure it out before they moved in, they had to, they had to pull their money to give us one security deposit check. It's a lot of information. I hope it's not too confusing. I hope this information has been beneficial, useful in one way or another. I thank you very much for being here and watching. This is Sonoma Views, where we talk real estate, property management, and local restaurant reviews. If you would like to receive future updates, notifications when I post new videos, please subscribe and there's a little notification, there's a little bell, you click on that and that'll give you an alerts so you don't miss an episode. Thanks for watching, I'll see you soon.